today's topic is the menstrual cycle. The normal menstrual cycle is the time during which the oocyte is mature, is ovulated and enters the uterine tube or the fallopian tube. It is a tightly coordinated cycle of stimulatory and inhibitory effects that result in the release of the single mature oocyte from pool of hundreds and thousands of the primordial oocytes. A variety of factors contribute in the regulation of this process includes the hormones, the paracrine and the autocrine factors are still to be identified. Now it produces the cyclical changes within the endometrium or the inner wall of the uterus. Now coming for the phases and duration of the whole of the menstrual cycle. By convection, the first day of the menses represents the first day of the cycle and the cycle is divided basically into two phases. The first is the follicular phase. Now this phase begins with the onset of the menses and ends on the day before the luteinite hormone surge. Now next is the luteal phase which begins from the 14th day and this is depending on the LH surge and ends at the next menses. The average adult menstrual cycle lasts 28 to 35 days and with approximately 14 to 21 days in the follicular phase and 14 days in the luteal phase. There is relatively little cyclical variability among women between the ages of 20 to 40 years. In comparison, there is significantly more cycle variability for the first 5 to 7 years after the menarche and the last 10 years before the cessation of the menstrual cycle. In general, the menstrual cycle length peaks at about the ages of 25 to 30 years and then gradually declines so that women in their 40s have slightly shorter cycles. Now changes in the intermenstrual interval are primarily due to changes in the follicular phase because the luteal phase always remains constant and that depends upon the progesterone hormones. Now we'll discuss in detail about all the phases of the menstrual cycle. The changes in the estrogen and progesterone level cause this cyclical changes in the female reproductive tract. The whole of the menstrual cycle we divide for our convenience into three phases, the menstrual phase, the proliferative phase and the luteal or the secretory phase. Now coming to the menstrual phase which is normally 0 to 5 days will be extending during which the functional layer of the uterine wall is left off and discarded with the menstrual flow or the menses which is nothing but the monthly bleeding which usually lasts for 4 to 5 days in total. The blood discharge from the vagina is combined with small pieces of the endometrial tissue. The average amount of the blood loss during this period is normally 50 to 70 ml and this is caused due to sudden withdrawal of the progesterone hormone. After the menstruation, the eroded endometrium will become thinner in amount. Now it enters into the next phase that is the proliferative or the follicular phase. Now this phase usually approximately it lies for 9 days and coincides with the growth of the ovarian follicles and this is basically depending on the hormone estrogen. During the follicular phase the wall of the endometrium will become 2 to 3 fold double the size and usually it will be 3 to 5 millimeters in size. Early during this phase the surface epithelium reforms and covers the endometrium. The glands increase in size and the blood vessels will elongate and they'll become spiral. Now it enters into the luteal phase from 14 to 28 days of the menstrual cycle. Now this phase is basically depending on the hormone the progesterone which is released from the corpus luteum. The progesterone produced by the corpus luteum stimulates the development of the epithelium and this is rich in glycoprotein. The glands become white, tortuous, saccular and the thickness of the endometrium will increase 5 to 7 millimeters. The follicular phase basically depends on the progesterone hormone and the estrogen also. The progesterone is coming from the corpus luteum and this increases the endometrial thickness. As the spiral arteries grow into the superficial compact layer of the endometrium they become increasingly coiled. 
the venous network becomes complex and large lacunae or the venous spaces developed and there is a direct arteriovenous anastomosis during this stage. The follicular phase there will be high levels of the follicle stimulating hormone and slowly the levels of the estrogen will be increasing and during the time of ovulation when the ova is released the LH will be higher in levels. After that during the phase of the luteal the progesterone hormone will be increased and this is coming from the corpus luteum which is present inside the wall of the ovary. If fertilization does not occur during the time of ovulation the corpus luteum will get degenerated and it will be forming as corpus albicans. The estrogen and progesterone hormone levels will fall and the next menstrual cycle will be repeated. If fertilization occurs the secretory phase is prolonged and the endometrium is prepared for the implantation of the embryo. Finally, the menopause. It usually occurs between the ages of 48 to 55 years. The endocrine, the somatic or the body and the psychological changes occur at the termination of the reproductive period and they are called as climacteric phase. The ovarian cycles terminate at the menopause and there will be permanent cessation of the menstruation due to the failure of the ova release.